Okay, so we have pushed the escaping loop binary onto the tag MDM, and for now we haven't modified it because we know it has the code to actually trigger the spray enhancement, the leak enhancement, and then the trap enhancement. And we know the leak enhancement will allow us to leak data. So we want to be analyzing the leak enhancement being touched by the kernel. So now we have reached the state where it's actually telling us to set breakpoints. So we're gonna add the two breakpoints and we're gonna continue execution. And we're gonna hit enter. And so now we reach the vulnerable function. We're going to continue execution. And now we hit the function being called to send a notification. So we are going to skip this function at least 32 times. A few moments later. OK, so now I'm going to patch the code so, so the recovery thread is stuck. and continue execution. Okay, so now the recovery thread is stuck in the kernel. So we're gonna con continue execution. Okay, so now it's telling us that we should unblock the recovery thread and then analyze what is happening to the leak and enhancement. So now I'm going to unpatch the memory. And now I'm going to disable these two breakpoints. And I'm going to actually enable the breakpoint just after the recovery thread has been unblocked. And I'm not going to use the actual superior breakpoints because I want to be analyzing the enhancement before it's touched by anything and then see what actually modifies it. And continue execution. Okay. So now we are here. So we are just after, and we're going to use the F10 key in order to step. So sometimes the decompiler output is not actually synchronized correctly. So we are here. Okay, so now we've passed the instruction that actually updates RDI. So now if we look at RDI, okay, so it's RDI is pointing to our user enhancement. And if we go back here and look at where our user enhancement is 1C3E72A0030, 1C3E72A B8. Yeah, so the, the offset is just because it's taking into account the next same RM flink. So we can see it gives us the 0, 0, 0, 030. So this is the enlistment. So if we print that address as a key enlistment, let's see what we have. So obviously most of the fields are zeroed because it's a fake user enhancement and we haven't initialized all the fields, but we can see that the next MRM is set, like the fling pointer, because it's going to point to the trap enhancement. Also, it has a transaction and the transaction has some fields defined, like the actual state is defined. 
And so if we go back to the can instrument, uh, there is the namespace link, which is a substructure, which has a links, which is again all zeros. It also has a mutex, which is embedded as well, uh, which is a K mutant structure. And it has everything set to zero. It has a header, which is all set to zero as well. The only thing that is set is the mutant type, which is set to two, and it has a wait list head, which is also set to user and addresses due to the fact that we actually set them in the code. So let's go back to the user announcement. So we have the mutex, we've analyzed the header, we can look at the mutant list entry. We can see they are all zeros. Now, if we go back to the canisment, so most of the other fields are actually pointers, so they are not actually embedded structures. There is the, the canisment history, which is uh, an array, and uh, we can see. It contains two fields that are also zeros. Okay, so now we know what was in the k enlistment, like our user enlistment before anything happens. So let's step. We use F10. So here is testing the actual enlistment head. If we look at where we are. We can see RDI is our fake user enlistment, our leak enlistment. And this is the actual enlistment head address. So if we look at the actual K resource manager, let's look at that. So the K resource manager enlistment head is at offset 110. So here we print the K resource manager and we can see we started with like 5,000 hex enlistments and now it's a little bit below that amount, okay, which is normal. Okay, so we know this is the enlistment head. So let's continue. Okay, so now we have a call to ob reference objects. So let's step over this. If we reanalyze our canisment, the thing is, we know that this call ob, ref ob reference object actually modified the object header, which is before the canisment in memory. So our actual enlistment hasn't been modified as far as I can tell. So let's continue execution. So now we have our KE wait for single object on the actual enlistment mutex and it's passing the pointer to the mutex. So we know the mutex is embedded into the canisment. So let's step over. So this is now stepping over. And let's analyze our canisment again. 
So we are more interested in the new text because we know that's what has been passed to the ke wait for single object function. Oh, nice. Look at the honor thread. This wasn't said before. Look, that was before, it was set to zero. So the honor thread has been set by the ke wait for single object function. Very nice. And it's a case thread. Anything else has been modified? So we still have our mutant type. The user and pointers are still there. What about the mutant list entry? Oh, nice! Two other kernel pointers. So if we look again at this one, So we know in the mutant list entry we have two pointers and here we have another pointer. So we have three different pointers. So let's let's look at what they are. We know we can use the bang pull command. Okay, so it's telling us that the fling pointer is actually a thread. What about the bling pointer? Very nice. It's telling us that it's a K resource manager object. And we kind of know this one is also a thread, but we're going to check with the bang pull command. Okay, we see the address of this thread is actually the same address of the thread that was set in the previous pointer we showed. Very nice. So if we go back to the K resource manager that we showed, So the address we showed for the K resource manager is 8510. It's actually in that chunk. So actually, we have the K resource manager that was passed as an argument to the vulnerable function that is actually written into our user and objects. Very nice. And another thread. But because we have the K resource manager address, we can actually read it from username, right? and the offset of the K resource manager that we leak. So it's eight, nine C eight. So where does it point? So let's check the address that we leak for the K resource manager. So we want the address that we leak and we want the address of the beginning of the K resource manager. So it's at offset 40. So if you look at the K resource manager, offset 40 is inside the mutex, which makes sense. So we have 28 for the mutant. And then we need another 18 hex. So 18 hex is indeed into the mutant list entry. And so because it's offset 18, it means it's going to be the address of the flink. So when we're going to leak the address, we know we're leaking inside the mutex. And then inside the mutex, we know we leak inside the mutant list entry. And then we know we leak the address of the flink. And so what we need to do basically is we need to get the address we leak and then subtract the offset of the mutant list entry which is 18 hex. And then we land to the address of the mutant, which is 
at the beginning of new text, and then we need to subtract 28 to be at the beginning of the carry source manager. And once we are there, we can add the offset of the anism head, which is 110. So let's continue debugging just to see what happens. I'm using F10. So we're testing if the anism is notifiable. Then we're testing if the anism is superior. Then we're testing if the transaction is in doubt. Okay, now we're reaching the superior breakpoints. Very nice. So we're setting the notification flag. So now the enlistment is notifiable flag is unset. It's calling the ka release mutex function. So I'm just going to continue execution. Okay, nice. So what is happening now is that we are again post sending the notification. So I'm just going to continue execution. And now, again, post execution. So I'm just going to disable the breakpoint. OK, nothing hits. And if we go back to the target VM, so you see they detected that we won the race. But now, if we actually continue execution, we don't detect that we leaked the key resource manager address because the code is not there. And so we're not able to actually inject an escape on this point. And it crashes. Because when we hit enter, what, what happens is that I injected a, a wrong enlistment that has a null pointer. OK, so I have added code into the escape loop function in order to actually retrieve the K resource manager base address and then uh, compute where the enlistment head is in order to actually inject this escape enlistment into the linked list of fake enlistments. And so we know the address of the leak enlistment we have allocated in userland. So we can retrieve a pointer to the actual mutex. And then from the mutex, we actually retrieve the blink that we figured out is actually set to an offset into the K resource manager. And so we notice in the debugger that it's actually pointing to the mutant list entry field. And so we basically subtract the mutant list entry field from the K mutant and then once we actually land to the beginning of the k-mutant, which is actually the mutex viable, we actually subtract the offset of the mutex into the k-resource manager. So this will basically retrieve the offset that we saw earlier, because we know we need to subtract the address of the mutant list entry inside the k-mutant, which is offset 28, and then the offset of the mutex inside the care resource manager, which is offset 28. So now we should be able to lead the care resource manager address. And so we need to inject a new enlistment into the list. So we know the inject enlistment will inject the escape enlistment. So we need to build the escape enlistment. And so we retrieve the first enlistment which is pointed by the enlistment head. So maybe the P enlistment head name is not a great name, but it's basically the enlistment that is at the head of the list and it points to a K enlistment. So it's a K enlistment pointer. So now what we can do is we can build our user land enlistment that is the escape enlistment and we are passing this address, which is uh, the actual fake address, which will be 
used to actually set the escape anismin next MRM flame pointer to the actual address of the anismin head. And the reason we subtract canismin next MRM is because this function, if you remember, takes uh, k anismins and then it will actually add next MRM offsets. So we subtract it. So it's actually gonna set the anismin next MRM flame pointer to the actual address of the anismin head. Okay, so we have pushed the binary, I executed it, and I blocked the recovery thread, as you can see. Uh, we freed the more than 32 enlistments, and now I'm gonna debug uh, after I unblock the recovery thread. So I unpatch the memory. And in this one, I'm just gonna enable the breakpoint that is only for the super case. So it's going to be after the leak anismin is touched, but that's going to simulate the same kind of scenario where we won't actually simulate the win, winning the race condition anymore later. And we just rely on the superior breakpoints. Nice. So we see that we reach our superior breakpoints and what happened from user then? So nothing happened for now. So I'm just going to continue execution. So it's hitting the same breakpoint and actually it's probably for the escape enlistment. So now if we continue execution. Okay, so the first thing is it didn't crash. Now let's see what happens from user end. So we were able to leak the K resource manager address. We we're able to get the address of the first enlistment and close handle failed. But I think what matters is that we're able to exit from kernel end. The last thing I want to do is I just want to make sure no thread is actually stuck into the recovery function. And so I'm just going to set the breakpoints on this. And this offset is actually in the loop. So it's actually here at offset 102. And if we continue execution, we can see that it never reached that loop. So we executed the actual while loop and no thread is stuck into the TM recovery resource manager X function. So we did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.